Hey everyone, Kyron here from OBS Crypto, bringing you a very, very quick video. Today we're gonna to be overviewing my budgeting calculator I have created specifically for my cryptocurrency bear market uh, portfolio series. So the goal of this calculator will provide us a weekly dollar cost average amount that we can invest in a cryptocurrency or invest any way you possibly would like to. It doesn't specifically have to be for cryptocurrency. Uh, it does take into account every possible scenario life has and everything you're currently spending or making money on, okay? But regardless, it will give you a weekly figure, this expendable income that we can actually throw into whatever you would like. Now, if you are here in regards to the course, I suggest this is the first place you look at before you move into my live streams and before you look at any other of my videos. And also, if you are someone that's just just here to know how to budget. Again, it's gonna figure out a weekly amount of expendable income you have. So whatever you're looking to possibly invest in or save up for, just remember that. So with that being said, the download link for this will be in the description below. And of course, take the time out of your day, whether that's 15 minutes, half an hour, or even one whole hour. This is gonna save you so much time, hassle, and stress. You will thank yourself later. Let's get into the video. So if you've taken the time to download this, you're gonna be able to see what I'm seeing on screen now. I wanna go over everything with you really quickly just so you know what the different colors mean and why things are placed where they are, especially if you're not accustomed to seeing a budget sheet before. Now, of course, the most, well, recognizable thing is on the far left here, and that is the budgeting item. So this is all the items that account for everything you spend or any sort of income you have through your entire life. So we start off with income and the remainder are bills and any sort of expenses you would um, look at, not just on a week to week basis or a day to day basis. As you can see at the top here, I account for any bills that you may accumulate on a yearly basis, half yearly, quarterly, anything like that. So if you have a bill that only comes around once a year, instead of you having to figure out what is that divided by say 52, which is every week in the year, this does it for you, okay? So it, it accounts for everything. Um, so I do suggest don't play around with any of the formats here or any of the uh, formulas. I've done it all for you exactly, okay? So as I said, start off with income, as you can see on the left here, I might zoom in a little bit more. So we start off with income personal credit expenses, this is like your loans, but personal loans, utilities, personal expenses, so that's week to week typically things, uh, business expenses, so if you do have a business and you do need to account for that, it's gonna be very, very basic, so I've got any and all business expenses here, because there's so much business expenses in different sort of categories, you will just plop down anything in here. Again, you can plop down 10,000 in the yearly, you can pop down 100 in the weekly and just do that yourself, okay? It'll all figure it out for you and total it. Then down here, you've got entertainment habits and eating out. Now, this is particularly sort of the leisure type things, um, but again, we'll get into that in a second, and other. So anything else that you potentially have, now this is bills, um, you would enter that in the bottom here, okay? So let's just quickly go over it and let's just play around with it. Now, if you've downloaded it, I suggest you, obviously you would know your income. Most people get paid on a weekly, fortnightly, or monthly basis. Some other people have yearly salaries. You would obviously put that in there. Let's just say every week I get paid $1,300. Okay, so the as you can see on the left here, the red is the, the totals for the, that, specific, um, that specific section, okay? So let's just say I have an investment property or let's just say I'm a freelancer and uh, I average a freelancer work I just get 200 a day. I'm a really good freelancer, okay? So weekly total would come up as $2,300. It's very important you know, and this is why it's good to watch a video, that the daily amount only goes into five days, not seven days. So if you do get paid a daily amount over the course of seven days, if you get paid Saturday, Sunday as well, it might be $225 a day. You would just get split those two days off and divide them by five, okay? So it might be $225 over the course of five days. So let's just take it back to 200 because it's a, it's a nice round number and I hate seeing uneven numbers. So $2,300 a week, that is your income. Then maybe we'll come down here to personal credit expenses. So let's just say we have a personal loan that we need to pay a monthly amount of $400. Okay, so we can see the total down here. So it'll total it so you can clearly see if you've got multiple different sections in here, what the total is, just to kind of backtrack that, just so you know you've done the calculations right. Let's just say we have a mortgage. So we have a house where every week we pay 300. 
Um, we have a credit card where we like to pay that off monthly. Any other debt obligations, so superannuation, whatever. Now, normally super would come out of something, if you're, this is for Australian, I'm speaking here, out of your wage. But let's just say you're, you're self-managed. Um, I don't know, let's just throw some random numbers in here. Maybe every year you sacrifice $5,000. So it does the calculations here for you, okay? So it works out on a weekly total, as you see, weekly total. Now, over the side of utilities, again, let's just punch some random numbers in. Um, let's just say we have, let's just say, I mean, again, I wanna quickly specify this for those who don't know. If you didn't have a mortgage, okay, you would leave that blank. If you are renting, you would enter this in here. Okay, this is house bills. So let's just say, for example, let's say that 300 was in there. Um, personal, let's just pay 160 a month. And let's just say half yearly, I have, uh, you know, maybe insurance that comes out, which is 600 half a year. Again, it's gonna come up some weird random number, but that is obviously divisible by the weeks. This is weekly amount that comes out. So personal expenses, again, let me just throw some random numbers in here. So random numbers in there. Now, if you have business expenses, again, whatever that may be, you may have, uh, weekly rent that comes out, so you put that in here. You might have, you know, monthly insurance may come out. You put that in here. It'll again total it for you. Now down here is going to be something that a lot of you guys need to be very, very honest with yourselves. I know it's scary doing something like this. I know people tend to um, under exaggerate it. You know, if you're if you're a heavy smoker and you smoke two packs a day and that comes about 100 bucks a day, don't kid yourself. Put in 100 bucks. Matter of fact. Since they fluctuate in prices, if you feel more comfortable putting 105 in, it's better to overestimate, okay? Because life can always throw random things at you. Again, entertainment. Lots of people my age will want to obviously go out clubbing and things like that. Be honest with yourself. How, If you have to look through your banking history, how much are you spending every time you go out? If you go out once a month, cool. If you go out every two weeks, cool. You've got a place to put it. If you spend 250 bucks clubbing every, every fortnight, you'd put it in, I think it'd actually be, yeah, it'd be in there. Eating out, again, if you spend, you know, takeaway, coffee, whatever, you've got it all in this section. Let's just say, I know I buy Maccas every day, I buy, um, let's just say, uh, lunch is $16 at Maccas every day, we'll put it in there. And other, so if there's anything that you've entered in here that you're going to yourself, you're really thinking hard and maybe, Maybe what about this, but there's no real place to put it. Again, it doesn't really matter where you put it in this sheet. This sheet isn't used for any sort of financial purposes. You're not giving it to a bank for a loan. So you can enter it all in the bottom here, or if you're literally just stuck, again, something uh, I do requires me to spend 550 every half year, but it doesn't at all relate to personal bills. There's no problem with me entering it in there. Just do it, okay? But that, that specifically is what this section's for, okay? So if you did want to print it out or use it, you know that, that that is there. So once all this is in, as you can see here, therefore the total weekly expendable income that I can use the DCA is $205.99. So now this income, not many people are gonna be getting this sort of income, okay? So you need to be real with yourself. You need to literally, literally think about everything you do. If you're someone that is a freelancer and it's very, very choppy, Again, don't kid yourself. Don't put in an amount that you, you might get once every six months. Go the lowest amount because again, we're looking at the worst case situation here, not the best case. Um, so that'll give you an amount you can DCA. So that's $205.99 every single week, which is super important because again, I know now I can spend that much money on crypto and moving into the next part of the, se in the video series, you're gonna quickly see that that is going to be divisible by First of all, how many risk profiles I'm looking at and specifically what percentages of that of risk I'm looking at um, putting my money into. So in my case, if we just jump back on here, that is gonna look something like this. So I'm gonna be dividing that 205 or $206, 10% uh, of that into high risk, 85% into medium risk, 2.5% into low and 2.5% into low medium risk. So again, everyone, very, very, very important that you understand that. And um, this is, again, the very first step you should be taking. I hope this helps. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for my next part where I go into the risk profiles.